So I found the loud Peter and tell her, take a deep breath in and out. And hold it there. So idiopathic pulmonary artery hypertension. Now, what else that I, I'd like to do? I'd like to run some investigations. You have to tell to your patient. My dear doctor, this is one of the important cases that I'm discussing today, my dear. This is station three cardiology. Station three cardiology, my dear. The scenario said that this 39 year old lady presented with a chest pain, shortness of breath on exertion with a bilateral leg swelling for the last six weeks. So yes, my dear doctor, you will have the two scenarios outside the room or the station three, station three cardiology, my dear. One of the scenario, if it is something like that, the chest pain, shortness of breathing, exhaustion, and bilateral leg swelling, and a young lady. So you should think about the cardiovascular system is involved, my dear. Because already I said, my dear, in cardiovascular symptoms are ASD, A for angina on exhaustion, syncope on exhaustion, Disney on exhaustion, and palpitation and leg swelling. These are the five important symptoms of cardiovascular system. So among them, she has already got the chest pain on exhaustion, shortness of breath on exhaustion, and bilateral leg swelling. So yes, my dear doctor, listen very carefully. This is very much important talk that you need to talk regarding the chest pain, shortness of breath, and bilateral leg swelling, how and onset duration and progression, all the things together. But my dear, listen very carefully what you need to do, the differential diagnosis that you need to think about, the cardiovascular system is involved here. So if you think about the bilateral legs and the leg edema, so leg edema is nothing but the features of the right heart failure. The right heart failure means the R for raised JVP, H for hepatomegaly, and F for foot edema, my dear. These are the three important features of the right heart failure. And these right heart failure, because the leg edema is the right heart failure, the features, along with the cardiovascular symptoms that is consistent with the right heart failure. So now the question is right heart failure is caused by the most common cause of the right heart failure as a mitral stenosis leading to pulmonary hypertension. Yes, once again leading to right heart failure. So if I say the right heart failure, yes, the pulmonary hypertension. The pulmonary hypertension, yes, the mitral stenosis is the most common cause. So we need to exclude it first by having the mitral stenosis mama. And we need to examine and to get the findings of mitral stenosis mama, whether she has or not. First one. And the second one is a pulmonary hypertension, secondly caused by the chronic lung disease. So the chronic lung disease includes the chronic bronchial asthma, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, bronchic disease and pulmonary fibrosis. So there's four important chronic lung disease. Once again, CBA, chronic bronchial asthma, COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and bronchic disease and pulmonary fibrosis, PF. So these are the four important causes of the chronic lung disease. So once again, a single question for the chronic lung disease that we can ask, along with these symptoms, the patient may have the cough, sputum, the respiratory symptoms, so that you can exclude them. Or, Along with that, of course, the chest auscultation will give the right answers of the chronic bronchial asthma, at least the single, single question that we can ask. For the chronic bronchial asthma, the single question, is there any history of atopy, allergy, A fever, me, hay fever, and the family history of the positive family history of the asthma, and the childhood history of the asthma, and any allergic, any allergens trigger. So this is about the asthma. First time in the world. Most effective course. MRCP UK SS Paces, a complete online course. Five complete stations, eight encounters, 32 modules. More than 100 history cases, communications and skills cases. More than 200 clinical cases and clinical approaches. More than 400 presentations. 500 plus hours video lectures. 1000 plus notes, SS boxes, SS tips and tricks, questions and explanations.
one of the best paces mentor, world famous experienced skillful and expert MRCP UK teacher. Learn with Dr. Sumata Kimur Saha, Chairman and Course Coordinator of SS Academy. The best and the best and the best course ever you will experience in your whole lifetime. COPD is single history the smoking and then bronchitis is the sputum, profuse sputum and last is the pulmonary fibrosis. So pulmonary fibrosis that we have the long list of features but at least the crackles that we are expecting. And bronchitis will have the crackles. So these are the findings that the chest auscultation findings are really necessary along with the history part that you need to do. So what I say the right heart failure pulmonary hypertension, mitostenosis, mitostenosis mama, and history of rheumatic fever, childhood. Secondly, the right heart failure, pulmonary hypertension due to the chronic lung disease. And thirdly, pulmonary hypertension, but secondary to chronic pulmonary embolism. So chronic pulmonary embolism, at least they may have the history of the DVT, the deep vein thrombosis, history of the unilateral painful leg swelling. Yes, we can think about it. And fourthly, yes, the idiopathic pulmonary artery hypertension means the palm primary. If you found nothing, so that you can say the primary pulmonary hypertension. So yes, my dear doctor, what I said, I said that the first diagnosis is the right heart failure due to the pulmonary hypertension, it may be primary, it may be secondary pulmonary hypertension. And secondly, that we can think about, yes, this may be the congestive cardiac failure due to ischemic heart disease, is ischemic cardiomyopathies, dilated cardiomyopathies, or maybe any cardiomyopathies, valvular heart disease, hypertensive heart disease, or maybe the arrhythmias. So means the heart disease, heart disease itself. So these are the two important components in our hands the lady has, the chest pain, shortness of breath and exhaustion, and of course the bilateral leg swelling. So my dear, as I say, the station 5 is nothing but the examination. Station 5 equal to examination findings, my dear. You speak, you, you take the history, you talk too much, but the most important thing is the examination, my dear. So that's why you understood this cardiovascular system should be excluded or cardiovascular system should be examined very, very well. Along with that, because of the chronic lung disease, then you need to examine the chronic lung disease, you need to examine the lungs as well. So you need to examine the heart and the lungs <coughs> altogether. But our first differential diagnosis should be the idiopathic <coughs> pulmonary arterial hypertension. What I say? Idiopathic pulmonary arterial hypertension is the first differential diagnosis. So we need to exclude the, all the pulmonary hypertension secondary to all the causes and we need to exclude the other structural heart disease as well. So yes, my dear doctor, let's do it. So let's start. Let me start by examining heart. Now, and I'd like to show the examine heart and getting some of the important findings in our hands. So yes, my dear, the similar way, the station one and station three that you are, doing the, all the procedures that you need to do, all the procedures here. So what you need to do, you need to wash your hands fast. And of course, then you need to tell her, ma'am, I would like to examine your heart and lungs. So during this procedure, if you have any pain or discomfort, just let me know and stop at that moment. So what you need to do for cardiovascular system examination, you need to start from the hands, my dear. That's really important. So this is a focused examination. I like to focus onto the hands for the pulse Rhythm, my dear, that is very much important. So yes, with your hand check, and we'll feel the pulse. For 15 seconds of the pulse, that you need to examine her. So what are we looking for? We are looking for different rate, but along with the rhythm. So I found the rate is 76 beats per minute, but she has got the regular rhythm. So yes, my doctor, I said it. 
if there is no irregular rhythm, so then you can think of that it is low volume or high volume. And I found there is no low volume, not even high volume, according to the cardiovascular system examinations. So we can think about, yes, at least the valvular heart disease is not there. So irregular rhythm absent, low volume absent, high volume absent. So definitely the valvular heart disease is absent here. Means the pulmonary hypertension, second, the most common cause is of course the mitral stenosis is not there. You can understand, so from the past. Immediately after that, as I said, the right heart failure, we need to examine the JVP. So can you turn your head on the left side for me? So she has got a raised JBP. So see the, and you need to tell her, do you have any pain right at this moment? In the legs? No. She doesn't have any pain, not even tender, but she has a typical pitting edema. You see the pit? You see the pit? Pitting edema. So this is the pitting edema, you see, and this is the pitting edema. So yes, my dear doctor, immediately after that, you found the right heart failure, the features. I have found that the raised JVP and also the foot edema. So diagnosis done the right heart failure. And now we need to examine the pulmonary hypertension, the PHT features. So the P for P2, loud and palpable, is a bit loud. H for heave, left person heave, and T for tricuspid regurgitation, my dear. So yes, ideally what you need to do, you need to expose the fool to examine the cardiovascular system. But here just I'm, I'm examining over the clothes to get the findings, my dear. You need to avoid it, but you need to do in the real exams to expose the lady to get the P2 loud. So I put on the right second dose of space. First time in the world. Most effective course. MRCP UK, SS Paces, a complete online course. Five complete stations, eight encounters, 32 modules. More than 100 history cases, communications and skills cases. More than 200 clinical cases and clinical approaches. More than 400 presentations, 500 plus hours video lectures, 1000 plus notes, SS boxes, SS tips and tricks, questions and explanations. One of the best paces mentor, world famous experienced skillful and expert MRCP UK teacher. Learn with Dr. Sumata Kimur Saha, Chairman and Course Coordinator of SS Academy. The best and the best and the best course ever you will experience in your whole life. Man. So I found the loud P2. This is the left second interval space to look for the P2 loud. So next to the P2, then you need to put your hands like this to feel the left personal heave. So this is heave is there, the left personal heave. You see that my hands are getting up. So there is a left personal heave. And put the stethoscope on the left fourth interval space to get the TR, tricuspid regurgitation, pan-systolic mama. But this is absent. So no tear, no pancystolic mama. Oh yes, my dear doctor, what we have found, I found the rage JVP. I found the leg edema. So here's the right heart failure. And I found the loud P2, lip personal heave, without tricuspid regurgitation, without pancystolic mama. So I found the pulmonary hypertension complicated by the right heart failure, but now the question is whether this pulmonary hypertension is caused by the valvular heart disease like the mitral stenosis and we need to just put the stress on the left 15th of space to get the mitral stenosis mama. And also I would like to put this stethoscope onto the back so that I can get the crackles 
to be excluded and also to get the other lung findings to exclude the lung causes mitre. So what we need to do that we need to put the stethoscope onto the left fifth interval space. So let's do it. So ideally you need to examine the lady with the left fifth interval space with the bell of the stethoscope with the definitely full exposure on the left fifth interval space uh, breath holding after expiration. But I will just put the stethoscope over the cloth as my dear. With the bell of the stethoscope we need to put the left fifth interval space and you need to put your hands with hands over the carotids here and tell her take a deep breath in and out and hold it there. So the mitral stenosis mama is not there. So we exclude it. The valvular heart disease that is the mitral stenosis. Secondly, what is in our hands? That is the lungs, which is a chronic lung disease that has to be excluded. So chronic lung is a chronic bronchial asthma. What findings that we expect? We are expecting the polyphonic bronchi. And secondly, that the COPD that we are expecting the vesicular with prolonged expiration with expiratory bronchi. And third diagnosis that is the bronchial disease and also the pulmonary fibrosis. So bronchitis and pulmonary fibrosis needs the crackle smite here. So let's do it. Ma'am, can you just sit forward for me? So you need to help her so that she can sit forward. And of course, you need to take the clothes up. Then you need to test them. Ma'am, can you take a deep breath in and out? Out, once again. Ah, uh, once again. Once again, once again, once again, so she doesn't have any features of obstructive airway disease like the vesicular with prolonged expression, expiratory bronchi, she doesn't have any crackles. So the lung disease excluded here. So yes, my dear doctor, what happened? So immediately after that, the heart and lungs that you examined. So this is very important that you wash your hands. And you need to ask about her concern. So you need to ask her concern. She's concerned about actually why this is happening. You need to tell her the diagnosis and explain and the further management planning. So yes, my dear doctor, listen very carefully. The findings that we found in her case, we found the raised JVP and we found the leg edema. So we found the right heart failure. And we found the palpable and loud P2 and also the left personal heave without tricuspid regurgitation. So we found the diagnosis, the pulmonary hypertension complicated by right heart failure. Now the pulmonary hypertension secondary to mitral stenosis is excluded. Means the valve heart is excluded. And secondly, the chronic lung disease is excluded, the absence of crackles and absence of obstructive airway disease that is evidenced by absence of vesicular with prone expiration, expiratory bronchi. Now what else in our hands? In case of chronic pulmonary embolism, patient may have some of the symptoms with the leg uh, DVT, uh, earlier DVT, so it is in our hands, but less likely a possibility in our case. So we excluded all the possible secondary causes of pulmonary hypertension. So what is what else in our hands? In our hands, there is a idiopathic pulmonary artery hypertension. So yes, we can say the idiopathic pulmonary artery hypertension is a likely diagnosis. We can say this young lady, 39-year-old lady, presented with the chest pain, shortness of breath, bilateral leg swelling, and that happened all over the on the on exertion. And I found on examination. She has got the right heart failure evidenced by the raised JVP and the foot edema, leg edema. And also she is having the pulmonary hypertension that is evidenced by loud P2 and the left personal heave without tricuspid regurgitation. So she has got the pulmonary hypertension complicated by right heart failure, but without the evidence of the mitral stenosis, without the evidence of the chronic lung disease, without the evidence of 
chronic pulmonary embolism. So my clinical diagnosis, putting all them together, is idiopathic pulmonary artery or hypertension. First time in the world. Most effective course. MRCP UK, SS Paces, a complete online course. Five complete stations, eight encounters, 32 modules. More than 100 history cases, communications and skills cases. More than 200 clinical cases and clinical approaches. More than 400 presentations, 500 plus hours video lectures, 1000 plus notes, SS boxes, SS tips and tricks, questions and explanations. One of the best paces mentor, world famous experienced skillful and expert MRCP UK teacher. Learn with Dr. Sumata Kimur Saha, Chairman and Course Coordinator of SS Academy. The best and the best and the best course ever in your experience in your whole life. So idiopathic pulmonary artery hypertension. Now, what else that I, I'd like to do? I'd like to run some investigations. You have to tell to your patients. I have to run some investigations and I'd like to confirm my diagnosis by doing the echocardiography color Doppler, especially to see the PASP, means the pulmonary artery systolic pressure. And these pulmonary artery systolic pressure normal, more than 25 millimeters pulmonary hypertension at rest and on exercise or after exercise, more than 30 millimeters of mercury. Now what you need to do, we need to do the cardiac catheterization to confirm the diagnosis along with the acute vasodilator testing for the management planning. And these acute vasodilator testing will give us the two interpretations. The one interpretation, if the test is positive, the treatment will be with the pines. I say the PP. P for pines means the nifedipines, means the nifedipines, nicotipines, amlodipines. So these are the treatments. If the tests are negative, this is also the P treatment, the three P's that you need to remember. The P for prostacycline is a PGI too. And P for posentan is a posentan, which is endothelial receptor antagonist. And the P for phosphodiesterase inhibitors, that is nothing but the sildenafil, tadalafil. So these are the drugs are used once again, the positive pies and negative once again, the postacyclic PGI2, P for posentan or bosentan, and the P for hospodiasters inhibitors. So yes, my dear doctor, this is all about the management and all about the things that we need to do. And also you need to, we need to do tests to exclude the cardiovascular disorders as well by doing the chest X-ray and ECG and also the color Doppler echocardiography that will exclude the other possibilities of pulmonary hypertension. And I hope that my dear, putting all them together, saying these things that idiopathic pulmonary artery hypertension is likely most likely diagnosis in this case is really justified. And I hope that my dear, you enjoyed it. Thank you, thank you very much.